very much for joining us today uh, for the England team announcement for England versus Scotland in the Guinness Six Nations. We have England head coach Steve Forthwick here, um, who I'll pass over to, for a couple of opening remarks before we come to questions. Thank you, Steve. First of all, thank you for coming today. The, there's very few fixtures in the rugby calendar that excite players and supporters alike more than the annual fixture between England and Scotland in the Six Nations Championship, as both teams battle out for the honour of lifting the Calcutta Cup. The England team that will play this weekend against Scotland, I think, has great experienced players. I think it also has exciting young talent and new combinations that will complement that experience. I know that the players are determined to represent their country with a pride, a commitment and a fight that our supporters rightly deserve and expect. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Russ, we'll come to you first, please. Thanks. Hi there, Steve. Um, a few talking points. Can we just go first of all with your very exciting looking back three? Ollie Hassel Collins getting a chance to make his debut. Regal for Max Malins. Just tell me a bit about that and the, the balance out wide. Yeah, well, I think there are. It is exciting. I think when you start looking at the competition for places in that back three, I think it's very exciting. I think Oli Hassel Collins has been playing well, not just this season, but last season as well. He has um, power, speed, athleticism. Max Malins has the ability to find the ball. The way he comes off his wing, he finds space. And uh, Freddie Stewart's um, ability um, for under the high ball, his ability defensively, and also what we've all we've seen is finishing try scoring opportunities in that final third, which I think has developed into a real strength of his. Always good to have a Curry in the back row. Ben Curry, obviously, with Tom out here and a bit after his first chance. <coughs> Cracking story, isn't it? I think um, Ben has worked really hard for this opportunity in the, in the England team and whenever there are opportunities sometimes they come along with the nature of injuries and it's up to the players to grab that opportunity I'm excited for him excited for this this new back row trio uh, the, come on, and I think you also look at Ben Earl who's going to um, come off the bench and I think he's another player who's played really well and been fighting for an opportunity with England. I think that you'll see that with this team is there are a lot of players who have been fighting for an England opportunity for a, a fair period of time and now they've got, they've got their opportunity. You had so many options, obviously, in the midfield. You have decided to go with Owen Farrell outside Marcus Smith. Uh, Joe March are back in at 13 and, and Jack at 9. Um, you did have a lot of options. Can you tell me a bit about your thinking and whether it was a, a tough decision to decide to go with Marcus and Owen in that same team after some have maybe questioned whether it really works at the top level? Yeah, I think that it's the right combination for this game. I think Joe Marchant at 13 works really well with Marcus. I think you see how those two connect both um, with ball in hand, ball the way those great attacking kicks that Marcus has, the way Joe finds those. Um, I think um, Owen has played really well in the 12 shirt over many years for England and we've had many some of England's best performances have been with Owen in the 12 shirt and the British Lions with Owen in the 12 shirt so uh, and he's certainly talked to me in the past about the ability and how he enjoys playing with another ball player um, I think it's competition at the nine shirt and I think Jack Van Portfleet is, um, has done has done really well and you start looking as we start discussing like that I think you start seeing the um, excitement we have in this back line and players who who have not made this this team but will be fighting to be into the next team. So players have earned their opportunity and now it's about going out on Saturday and performing. And just finally for me, how important that Jamie George has made <coughs> through the concussion protocol given you know, Luke and Dickey, that leadership, that important two shirt. Yeah. Clearly Jamie is um, a top quality player and really one of those experienced internationals who adds more than just his play. He adds with his personality, he adds with his leadership, he adds with that, that wealth of experience he has. There are players unavailable. I think I'm not going to sit here and talk about 
players that are available. I think I've said that every team has to deal with injuries. What I think is this is an exciting team. I think we've got some really experienced players and we've got some players that are fairly new to the international environment. And, and, and I think we've got players that have played international rugby and have then been out of it for some time. And I think they've been wanting to get back in. And that's the sense I've got of them. They are desperate to go out and play well for England. They're desperate to get out there at Twickenham this weekend in front of our supporters again. Hear that 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 crowd cheering them on. That's that's the sense of excitement I get from these players. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. We'll come to you. Thank you. Um, I know obviously Manu isn't is involved. Is he totally fit for selection? Yes. Okay. I mean, obviously for such a long time he's been available. He's been well, I think again, I look at the combinations for the game, this this specific game, and I look at what Joe offers in terms of that that work on the edge, his ability to cover ground defensively, attack, um, and I think uh, Ollie Lawrence has played tremendously well this season I think we'll all be excited by seeing Ollie Lawrence out there again in English again he's a player who's not been in the international environment for for a, a year or two but from from that I think you see players that are playing well I think everyone else would say Joe Marchin whether it's been a centre or wing he has played well week in week out for Harlequins for a, for a considerable period of time now and I think he said the same for Ollie Lawrence and again I, I come back to this that what what um, challenge for, for, for selection these players have that they're they're working hard to deserve their opportunity and they're, they're desperate for that opportunity and right now as we look towards Scotland and we look towards this game on Saturday and the players can't wait to get on the pitch and, and personally I can't wait to see them get on the pitch I totally appreciate what you're saying about focusing on the players that are here but just for Manu he's obviously got the opportunity to get back in moving forward isn't he? It's, not, it's, it's, it's not sort of a drastic thing in the long run I said to every player I'm picking a team for this week and um, I think there, are, there is competition in place and the, the nature is that there should always be good players that aren't in the 23 because that's what we want with England we want depth in every position people competing for the shirt I think we'd all agree with that and, and what I've seen here is players fighting for the shirt and then you make the selection for the game this game uh, this weekend against a specific opponent and then next week is a new week and just on Alex Tom Brown how big is it for him to be back because obviously he's another one who's sort of had a bit of time out a few injuries but has seen him working really hard to get back to the best yeah and, uh, and I'm delighted for him again the back row there's plenty of competition in the back row and um, I think Alex has, has been uh, played well and I think what's one thing you'll see here is that there is these are players who play well in the Premiership Premiership in Europe and we, I said we're watching those players week in week out and, and, and we have and I think these are players that um, are, have been on good form that have executed their skills and bringing their strengths onto the pitch and that's what I'm asking them to do and that's what I want Alex to do this weekend Julian, thanks. Yeah. I just ask you, Steve, how did Manu take it when you told him he wasn't going to be involved this week? Um, Manu was the incredible professional that he is. That he, um, we spoke. I told him what I'd decided selection-wise and why I had, and we shook hands. And then he went and trained really hard. And you can't uh, that that reaction is testimony to him and his character and not just him but there were several players in that way and and ultimately what, what do we want to build here we want to build a team that is not simply about selection it's a team that is building and going forward to try and get wins for England which means you've got to train hard every day we want to build a team that is not just about getting picked it's about going and playing well and that's what we want as a team we want this team playing well and players are fighting for selection. Players are working on the training field to get into the team. They know. They know. I watch and I take notice of it. And and um, on each of those occasions, when I have those conversations, I give the players clear feedback. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Steve, you've spoken about trying to get that reconnection with the crowd at Twickenham. Um, fans always love to see a new winger. How, how exciting is it to see Ollie Hassel Collins out there? I think there's a lot of players the fans will be excited about and I think this is a fixture the fans will be excited about I, I know um, 
I can't wait for kickoff time on Saturday afternoon. Ollie Hassel Collins. <laughs> Ollie Hassel Collins is he's a terrific player. He's got speed, he's got pace, he takes people on the outside, he can cut back in off his left foot. He, he's good under the high ball. And I think, um, as I said, defensively, he's, he's physical. This is a guy who's over 100 kilos and six foot four, and, and he can hit and he can run fast. Um, so um, I, th I think most of us would like to have those, have those attributes. <laughs> um, he's, a, he's an excellent player and a, and a fantastic young man, and he's, he's brilliant to be in our team. Thanks, Nick. We'll come to you. Steve, what kind of job are you um, are you asking Lewis Lovren to do this weekend? Real simple job. Um, bring all the strengths of why I picked him onto the field in the international environment. Simple as that. He's picked because of what he brings. He carries, he tackles, he runs, he plays with a grit and determination and bring that and that's what that's why players are picked. I'm not asking them to be anything different. I'm asking them to come work together and um, and, and, and bring those strengths and I think you just start looking at that we talk about Ollie Hassel Collins we talked about power and pace we talked about Lewis Ludlam with his um, determination his grit his fight you start talking about Alex Dombrand and the skills he has the ability he has to open space that Joe March and his ability to cover ground he kind of glides across the ground as you start looking at that this is a I think this is an exciting team and I think it's a, it's got a great blend of strength I know we're working our way through most of the players. <laughs> and Ollie Chesham, I can only imagine, given the work that you put into him um, back in your old job, the ability to pick him as a starter in the first Six Nations 23 must be, must be a, a, a big moment for both of you. Yeah, well, I, I think it's him who's doing all the work. It's him who deserves um, all the credit for that. I think he's uh, a, a fantastic young man who, whilst early in his international career, has grown immensely. Um, and again as I, as I watch him his ability to play in the second row to play at six his ability to cover the ground his ability to, to he's always been a fantastic line out forward and then the, the props talk to me about how hard he works in the scrum and, and you, you, you want your props to say that about you as a second row he's been he's been superb and, and again I go back another young man who's got such an exciting future I think this, this is what makes for this team as we look forward to Saturday, I really want to see him out there on the pitch in front of our supporters. And, and, and last question from me, and apologies if this seems a silly question. Um, can, you, can you win Six Nations Championships, test matches, using a Premiership rugby blueprint, if that makes any sense to you? Or is there, is there an obvious step up from what you were doing last season? Um, I think I've talked several times that, that when you build a team the way you want to play you want to look at the players that are available to you the strengths that they have got the background they've got and the time you've got to do it in and you maximise then every minute to those strengths and that's what you do in, in, in any team um, you've got to look at the competition you're in and how you need to play to be successful in that competition um, so this is a different environment um, and uh, the process you go through is that what players you've got what strengths they've got what the opposition like, what wins in this competition, let's get on with it. Has it been easier to pick a test side over a premiership side and the um, challenges there for the game to think about? I, just, I, I don't necessarily think about it e easy or hard because I, I want players competing for places and, and you, it's due, the, the players deserve that I spend due consideration and time and, and over selection and then I'm able to substantiate that and talk to them about why I've made the decisions I've made, which is exactly what I do with each, with each of the individuals.